All right, guys, welcome back to the show. See, I'm bundled up. Just having a, I guess this is a warning sign that winter is coming. It's supposed to warm up next week, so structure is built. We have plywood sheathing on the roofs, but they're covered in snow, so we can't put the metal on, and we want to get this concrete poured. So we're gonna be doing the underground plumbing, um, putting in some rough-in electric uh, conduit, getting the water line ran in here, things like that. So we've brought this all up to grade uh, where we want it with our gravel. And so now we're gonna lay out some string lines for finished wall placement so we know where our plumbing goes and then we'll start trenching it. So we spent all day going around to stores, grabbing all the plumbing materials like that. Um, we're gonna get some string lines up and then tomorrow we're gonna trench this out and start putting some uh, plumbing in the ground. Seven foot six and a half from the outside. So this inside wall would be subtract three and a half inches from that. So that'd be seven foot three inches from there. This toilet one. So that is nine foot ten from from outside here. So nine foot ten. So we're gonna do the same thing and put one at nine foot ten. Nine foot ten, Jake. And then Cash get the So what we're doing here is we're putting up string lines where I know plumbing's gonna come up. So these string lines signify the finished uh, side of a wall. So I'm just figuring out which side I want. And that way, once we get to the point where we start bringing up a toilet, uh, flanges or drains, we know exactly where to put them based on all these string lines. So the, the one we just did is this outside edge of this wall. Oh, okay. So then I'll have, okay. So I'll know where to bring up my drain for this. I made them decide on the tub that they're getting, our drain's gonna be in the middle, cause it's gonna be one of those like, oh. stand up, like freestanding tubs. Yeah. We're gonna bring the drain up on the back side so you can't see it. And then that one is gonna be a custom shower, so we'll actually put the drain right in the middle. So we can mark those two off of that string line. We can mark the toilet off of this string line. These sinks off that one. We can mark the washer off of that string line. We can do this toilet and sink off of this wall and this string line. The only one we have to figure out is the island. So seven and eight is 15, 15 feet. Eight and six is 14, right? So that'd be 16 feet two plus half plus half. So 16 feet three would get us to the edge of that island. And I can put the clean out out there outside the porch and we'll just, we'll just have it so it pops up in the landscaping. Just kind of flush, it'll be hidden. Let's just go right here. Let's measure off there, Jake. Just put it up against the insulation. Okay. So, 127. So let's go to the next post. Let's go up against the insulation. 127. We'll just start here the lot with what we have. We have a toilet and a sink, so we'll mark those kind of how where we're going to tie them in. So we need to look at the plans again. We'll work our way across. If you, you 
dip a straw in your water and you hold the top and you pull it up, the water doesn't drain, right? Yeah. But if you open your thumb, it lets it vent and lets it drain. So I that's the same it. thing. So you have to have air that can come down. So this will be a sink. So it's going to be a two inch pipe coming up. Yeah. So we can extend that two inch pipe into the wall and it can vent up. So that's a drain and a vent. We've got a toilet here. So we'll break off a vent right after the trap. So your, your vent's always after the trap. So the trap is what holds water to keep gases coming back into the house. So your vent has to be after the trap. Okay. So a toilet has a trap in it. If you look at the toilet, it has a trap in it. Mm -hmm. So then it'll drain, we'll bring a vent off right here. So we got those good. This is our kitchen sink which that really won't have a vent. So you can do two, one of two things. You can bring another line over, pop it up and just have a circle and it allows air to move. It's close enough to this wall. It's actually, it's a four inch pipe. It's gonna, it's gonna drain fine. Technically, you're supposed to do a loop. This is the washing machine. So it'll be a two inch pipe coming up. We can go up with a vent. These are two sinks, so there'll be two inches of pipe coming to the wall. We can go up right off of those with a vent. That's a toilet. So where's our nearest wall? Right here, right? So it has to be... And we're going to move this that way, correct? So if we move this this way, we'll have to come the toilet vent and drains over here to this. We'll just have to come off like this and over to this wall with a vent. This shower has a trap. This will act as the vent for that. This comes over here, drains the tub. We'll come off here. That'll act as a vent for that. The only other one that I forgot was the utility room drain. So we got to figure that out right now. So that'll be the utility room drain. We'll just go over, dump in there. All right guys, this is day two. Yesterday we picked all of our plumbing supplies up, marked all our lines out, and now we're gonna start laying this underground um, pipe. And I am not a certified plumber. However, I've done a lot of plumbing on all my remodels, on all my own personal homes. And what I like to do, is I like to run the main pipe at a 90 degrees from the walls. Then, so that way I have a main truck going down and then I will break off each way to where I need um, drains, vents, stuff like that. And it makes it easy for me. Um, I can use all 45s, long sweep 90s. I'm not having to use 22 and a halfs or have any weird angles. Um, just makes life a lot easier. So we got our main trench. We know how deep we have to be here, which is just below where our insulation is going to be. And then we're going to go a quarter inch per foot. So this building's 36 feet. So we got to be about nine inches deeper on that end, which isn't bad. That's not enough for me to rent a trencher. I don't know how Jake and Cash feel about that, but we almost got it pretty much whipped already. So we've got the main trench and we'll just work off um, at the highest point and work all the way to the lowest laying all this. Once we get all the drains and stuff in, we'll lay our water supplies.
All right, so we get lots of questions on our underground plumbing. Typically, we don't do this, but there are times where we can't get a plumber, and we are allowed to do this, so I take it on myself sometimes. So we're just going to go through kind of my process uh, of how I lay out the plumbing and install it. So here, this is the house part. You can see this line um, runs all the way straight through the house. So I run my main drain and waste pipe at perpendicular to the walls. So when I break off to you know, toilet, sink, stuff like that. I only have to use like a long turn um, elbow or a Y in a 45. It just makes the install nice and clean. Right here, you can see that's our clean out um, that goes out to the septic tank. So you can clean it out towards the septic tank or back towards the house. We put a double in right there. And then this orange line that runs all the way down is the main line. And then everything branches off from there. We typically run a four inch schedule 40 main line and then branch off and those branches will usually be either three inch or two inch based on what it's going to. So on the high side of the house I will put the pipe just below where the insulation starts that way it sits level the insulation will go right over it and then we run a quarter inch per foot drop on that main pipe out to where uh, the clean outs are. Alright so you know where to put your drains and stuff like that. We'll run string lines where the finished walls are going to be. You can kind of see those string lines right now. That will help you locate where those go um, so when the concrete gets poured they're where they need to be. Um, right here this is a second, uh, has two stories. So we drop it down to a three inch and that goes up to a bathroom um, right up above. So that will be a drain and a wet vent um, and that will actually go out the roof uh, to vent the whole house. Alright so right here we have a custom shower so there's a trap below that drain right there that's a special drain um, and then that three inch pipe that goes up the wall acts as the wet vent for that and then we break off with two inch here that goes over to a freestanding tub so there's a trap right under there and then that two inch is the vent for the freestanding tub and the vent will go up the wall and meet the main vent in the attic before it goes up, goes out the roof. Right here we are breaking off to a toilet so that bigger pipe is the toilet where the toilet will sit so we use a Y go to a long turn elbow to where the toilet will sit and then we break off to a two inch vent that goes up the wall and again we'll meet with the other vents and then over there is the utility room drain so with this vent we vent both the utility room drain and the toilet. So right here is a good example of how we're utilizing our string lines. You can see that I use the string line to mark my finished or my wall locations and so I can make sure that my vent goes up inside that wall so it will be hidden. So right here we have a Y and a 45 that breaks off to a double vanity. Um, those two inch pipes will be the drain but and also the vent. So those you can see right here the string line how the pipes sit just on the inside so they'll be inside the wall. We will put a sanitary T on there and then the vents will go up the wall and make their way up into the attic to meet up with the main vent. And then as we work down the line we just continue to branch off to our different utilities. One nice thing about running one main line perpendicular to your wall and just branching off is all of your sinks and things like that will wash your main line uh, to make sure the solids go down. Right here this is under my sink in the island so I have one uh, that's a drain and then I have one that's a vent so we'll do a high loop on the inside of the cabinet uh, so that the sink can properly vent. There is nowhere to run a vent up through the ceiling underneath the island so you just have to run two two inch PVC's over uh, so that you can create a high loop uh, and vent your sink. And then right here we have another bathroom. You can see we run over there again is where a toilet will sit and then we kind of Y off in 45 to a vent and then we have another sink drain there and that drain will also go up into the attic uh, and tie into the main vent. Alright right here we have our water distribution manifold. I choose to run a home run system under the floor so each 
uh, faucet will have a hot and a cold that runs directly to it so there's no joints under uh, the floor. This is just personal preference. Um, I make this box. If it's out in the center, I'll use stakes on the inside of the box and set that bottom two by six at the grade that the concrete floor is. So when they finish the floor, they just run that concrete right up to the top edge of that two by six, and we're good to go. And then I just brace up the pecs so that it doesn't get in the way. You could run all of your water lines through the ceiling joists. I just prefer to do it this way, do all the hard work uh, first, and then I don't have to come back and run a bunch of lines in the ceilings. This is personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, this is the way I choose. And if I ever have a problem, um, you know, there's enough lines running to each spot that I could branch off or cut out some drywall and add a line in. So from that box, I will run, I will insulate the lines and run them over to the locations of sinks. I'll use a 45 or a long turn 90 to run the PEX tube up into the location that I want it. The bottom of that 45 where your PEX enters that PVC, I always fill that with spray foam. You can see there I use a piece of half inch rebar um, to hold it in place. That way when the concrete gets poured, it is completely protected and not uh, contacting the concrete. And then before the concrete guys come, I always tape off the top so there's no chance that any rock or anything can get into those spots and wear, over time, wear a hole in your tubing. All right, so one thing we'll do to get uh, concrete in uh, prior to our main water line and electric it in is we'll run a four inch PVC pipe down, use 45s, and take that pipe outside of the structure so that we can uh, push our water line in at a later time. If you can get it done before, that's great. If you can't, this is an easy way to do it. You just got to make sure you use 245 so that that poly, uh, you'll be able to push it up in there all right. And then we do the same thing with the electrical conduit. We use um, Schedule 80 electrical conduit. We'll run that into our location for the electrician. Use a long sweep 90 so that he can pull that line through and run it out to the outside of the building. You can see right here, it runs all the way over, it comes out to the outside of the garage, and then we'll mark the end of the pipe with a piece of re-rod or a two by four so it's easy to find. This uh, Schedule 80 right here, that's a conduit that runs over to the island so we can get electric to the island. Uh, you could run conduit to multiple wall locations if you wanted. Um, this would just take a little bit extra time. Um, I did that in my house. This house, I only ran it to the island. The rest can be ran through the wall. So in this garage, we just ran two round drains so each bay uh, will be sloped to the drain and then they tie together and go out the side of the garage. Now this is going to vary on your location whether you're allowed to do, do this or not, whether you're allowed to daylight a drain. Some areas of the country, you have to run that into a separate tank where it's filtered and then gets pumped. Um, but in this case, we can do that. So our garage has two drains that go to the outside and then the pipe will be ran down the hill and just daylight. guys don't forget that we have a patreon for self builders we cover different topics every month we actually have a live you get to ask me questions uh, once a week we do a, a Tuesday conversation um, where we do question answering and then we do live once a month it's awesome because you get to be a part of a community of other self builders uh, you can talk with them talk with me so check that out if you're uh, wanting to build your own building or home and we also have design services if you want to design your own post frame building or home uh, reach out to us, design and Mr. Post Frame, and we can help you out with that. But uh, we appreciate you guys watching this video. Keep in mind, my labor on this plumbing is probably quite a bit lower than what an actual plumber would do it. I just figured um, I typically don't do it uh, unless I have to. I couldn't find anybody uh, in the, a timely manner, so I did it. And I just figured what I needed to cover my guy's time, my time, and then to make a little money. If you were to have a plumber come in here, it's probably gonna be uh, quite a bit higher, um, but just keep that in mind. Next video, we'll cover the in-floor heat, so the vapor barrier, insulation, tubing, all that good stuff. 
So as always, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you on the next video.